What's going on YouTube? This is the Lame Dad bringing you another retro game review. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe today. And today we will be looking at one of my personal favorite games on the Nintendo 64. Released in October of 1998, WCW vs NWO Revenge by THQ was coming off the success that World Tour had brought to the Nintendo 64 the previous year. At the same time, one could argue that WCW itself was coming off of its strongest year ever as a company. In 1997, you had possibly one of the most anticipated wrestling matches in the history of the sport in Starcade 1997. Starcade 1997 would pit Hollywood Hulk Hogan, the leader of the Thug NWO, against Sting, the outcast hero of World Championship Wrestling. Ongoing as well, you had the Monday Night Rating Wars between the WCW and the WWF. Again, you could argue that this was the greatest period in wrestling history. Now, it wasn't until World Tour was released that gamers had a legitimate wrestling game that wasn't a steaming pile of crap. World Tour won the fighting game of the year in 97 for its gameplay and its mechanics which would go on to become the perfect template for THQ and still to this day in 2021 it baffles me that these mechanics aren't looked at by another company. Why does 2K continue to release these wrestling games that it's so complicated to perform a basic move? Sometimes less is more. Less than a year later, Revenge improved on every facet of World Tour. It brought the same excellent gameplay mechanics while adding a bigger, more accurate roster, new real event arenas, including Starcade 97, where you could reenact the match between Hulk Hogan and Sting, as well as five other venues. I have a huge soft spot for this game and the nostalgia factor runs high. The controls are simply perfect. There is nothing difficult about pulling any, any of these moves off. It has a very easy learning curve where anyone would be able to pick the controller up and have the gameplay mastered within just a few short matches. So let's go ahead and get it out of the way. The graphics stink, especially by today's standards. They can be bad. But 23 years ago, this is what we had. And it was awesome 23 years ago. This is where you had to play video games, but still also use a little bit of your imagination. My favorite aspect of the graphics is Goldberg. This was when he was first coming into the WCW and he was killing everyone and stomping everybody and somehow THQ managed to make his face look like he has a cigar in his mouth. With both factions of the NWO at the time, the NWO Black and White and the Wolf Pack, you had every superstar that was on TV to play with, minus Ric Flair who was fired by WCW at the time that the game was being made. With 63 total characters and the ability to customize costumes, the possibilities seemed endless. It was a wrestling game for the real wrestling fan. From the way that Raven walks out and sulks in the corner, to the way the heavyweight championship belt would have NWO spray painted on it if you beat the championship mode with Hulk Hogan. This game had wrestling fans in mind. With new animations portraying actual moves, it gave fans what they wanted. With the ability to use Rey Mysterio to perform special moves off the top rope to the way that DDP would throw you into the ropes and then on the way back he would hit you with the diamond cutter. Speaking of DDP, I always wondered what bar they dragged Diamond Dallas Page out of and made him fight people. It was these small details with every character that made this game at the time the greatest wrestling game of all time. Not to mention this game also won Fighting Game of the Year in 1998. As for the game modes, this is where the game starts to lack. 
There are five WCW championship belts that you work your way through tournament style until you fight the champion. And once defeated, you, have, you will have unlocked that character. And that's it for the championship mode. You can play it again if you want Disco Inferno to be the reigning WCW champ, but there isn't much replay value there. Then we have the basic wrestling matches. The replay value in this game really comes from the multiplayer game, and with the Nintendo 64 being the only console at the time to offer four players on one console, this is where a lot of people really got the game value from. Another issue with the game that doesn't bother me so much is the generic entrance music and no video animations. I know this bugged a lot of people when it was released, but I didn't think it was too bad. The wrestlers at least entered the arena and the ring as accurately as they could have made them. Again, this is a point in time where you still had to have an imagination to play some of these games. In later games, THQ would remedy and perfect the entrances, music, and videos. While I love this game, THQ really ruined every wrestling game when they made No Mercy. It's hard to go back and sink time into revenge when No Mercy is the greatest game, great greatest wrestling game ever created. Revenge will always have a special place on my list of games. It's not No Mercy. With that being said though, Revenge is still an excellent top-notch wrestling game that any fan of wrestling should own. Again, this is The Lame Dad bringing you another retro review. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe. Drop me a comment about how great WCW was or how terrible the WWE is now. Thank you for watching and until next time, game on YouTube.